Hello folks and welcome to this week's review, this week's Friday review. Got a bit of channel news, so if you want to skip this bit, go down below into the description and there will be some chapter headings you can skip straight to the review. But I do have some channel news and basically Funtunes Friday, it is no more. There will be no more music coverage of the type you're normally seeing on a Friday video. Why is that? Well, they're not pulling their weight. The music videos are not pulling their weight on this channel. And this is a job I'm doing. It's not a hobby. If it was a hobby, I'd still be doing the music videos because I enjoy them. They add variety to what I do, um, which is important to me. And I love my music. But as a business, they're not pulling their weight. So they're gone. Now, this is not unusual. It's happened and it's still happening to other YouTube creators out there. I follow a couple or I used to follow a computer games channel and I still follow a movie channel. Both of those creators, computer games, movies, love their music and they do music related videos and they never do as well. Both channels experience drops in viewership and mine was the same. So they're out. Now, if you were one of those people who did watch my Friday music videos, I want to thank you for all of your support because there was a core audience. It was always the same audience in terms of numbers, but there was a core audience there. And I want to thank you very much for supporting those Friday music videos. If you're still looking for music coverage and you enjoyed how I presented that to you, well, you can find that coverage, basically the same sorts of coverage over at my website. I will be doing music magazine type features on my website. And this particular video is going out on a Friday. And if you are interested in seeing a music magazine, well, later on Friday, I'll be publishing the first of my website music magazines. So I'll put a link below for my website. And if you want to nip over there later on, on a Friday, I don't know, late afternoon, kind of time. If you want to see the music magazines, there will be hopefully on a regular weekly basis, there'll be a music magazine there for you, but in text form. So what are you going to see on a Fridays from now on? Well, it's fairly flexible. I have mentioned the fact that I'm trying to make news more newsy and put news onto the channel promptly instead of saving it up for a big video later. So what I'm going to try is adding hi-fi news videos at the end of each week. Let's see how that goes. See if I get enough news in as the months progress to produce a regular video. In addition to that, I will add fiddly bits, maybe little bits of previews, maybe some hints and tips. Maybe the odd accessory will be included, maybe some vinyl care. Bits and bobs. So I might call Fridays Hi-Fi News, etc. The etc being all those bits and bobs. So that'll be Fridays from next week. Anyway, excuse the fairly extended channel updates. It's a fairly big deal because of the large content change. So let's get to the review. Today's review, we're looking at a balanced headphone amplifier from Topping. Price is £599, and I'll put a link below in the description if you fancy buying one. Now, I have reviewed a variety of Topping hardware here and on my website, but they've all been firmly placed within the budget sphere, have been built to a low price, and, well, you might say they look it too. This one, the A90D headphone amplifier, is a little different. It arrives at a higher price point and, true to that indicated and more generous build budget, arrives with a dash of panache, at least in terms of aesthetics. So let's look at that dash of panache, shall we? And let's take a closer look. <laughs> I 
and welcome to the closer look section for the Topping A90D balanced headphone amplifier. And well, it's a rather dinky little chassis, don't you think? Look on the right hand side there, and that gives away an extra feature because you've got a front mounted volume switch, which means the A90D can also act as a preamp if you wish. Now, for me, this is a new topping. It's also a topping I'm happy to investigate. It's also a topping that's a little different from the original A90. The A90D does not arrive with the earlier model's toggle switches, which were mounted on the front on the original A90. So there's no front mounted input toggle switch and there's no front mounted gain toggle. And it was the latter especially that I missed. On the A90D, the two level gain can be found via the included remote control that looks like every other topping remote you might have seen in your time, but with reassigned buttons. Even so, and of course I realize this is a personal bias thing, but hey, I much prefer the gain to be mounted on the chassis in case the topping remote runs off to the Bahamas with my Blu-ray player. Now, the reason the A90D is the A90D is because it's taken the A90 and gone all discreet, hence the D. The A90D uses a suite of nested feedback composite amplifiers, four in all, supported by voltage current hybrid feedback architecture, along with ultra high gain feedback technology. Oh, I need a little lie down after that lot. All of this governs helps to create a fully balanced system with, says the company, a low noise output. Well, we'll see about that. The A90D pushes out 9,800 milliwatts of power at 16 ohms of load. Now, even though there are large fingered foam hands pointing at the balanced features of this headphone amplifier, single ended mode is actually supported as well. That means the front fascia does see a full size 6.35 millimeter single ended output, while next door, yes, there's a balanced 4.4 millimeter Pentacon output. And just to finish things off, a four pin XLR socket too. It's a bit of an interface light show, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's flip around the back shall we? And we will see single ended and balanced inputs. And you may not be surprised to hear single ended and balanced outputs, plus a USB port for firmware upgrades. There's also a weird little DIN port on the left. This is called the extender. This is for another box that you can purchase separately, and this increases the amount of inputs. So the extender box, which is known to its mother as EXT90, that adds three more pairs of balanced inputs plus another pair of single ended inputs. You can buy the EXT90 from that same link in the description I mentioned earlier for a penny short of £250. Finishing up on the rear of the A90D, you'll also find a ground switch to tackle any nasty hum you might encounter. Plus, there's a terribly slim rocker power switch. Now I mentioned a light show on the front, so let's swizzle back to the front then. If you keep the volume knob pressed in, and then you power up, you will be able to twiddle with the A90D's internal software and the settings within. These settings allow you to change the front fascia interface brightness, the remote control itself, whether you want that on or off, the volume memory settings, and also safe volume settings. On the remote control, apart from that gain button are mute and brightness buttons amongst the more usual remote options, such as volume and the like. Spanning 222 millimeters by 150 by 45 millimeters. The packaging also includes a power cable, Instructions, which I'd describe not so much as a manual, more of a leaflet, and a 3.5mm plug converter for 3.5mm headphone designs. So, how does this one sound? Well, let's get to the sound quality tests. 
and we'll find out. Welcome to the sound quality tests for the Topping A90 balanced headphone amplifier. And I began in single ended mode, just to be awkward, and connected a pair of, well, more vintage, I suppose now, Sennheiser HD 650s, playing a CD version of Dummy via Porter's Head. I selected the Trip Hop track, Numb, and then gently segued into another one called Rhodes to primarily test the bass, but also the overall clarity of both tracks. Now, it's all too easy for bass to swamp the entire soundstage on this one. While there's a Hammond organ sound on Numb, that can sometimes dissolve into the background because of that big bass sound. Now, what struck me immediately about the A90D was the focus around those lower frequencies. Now, the bass does go down deep on both of these tracks, but the level of bleed from the bass from the A90D was kept to a minimum. The tight bass response also meant that the vocal, well, that struggled less against this bass tide. Thus, the delivery was coated in more emotion and nuance surrounding it, allowing the ear to pick up those little human imperfections. The precision around the bass on Rhodes did mean that the bass was never as big or as all-encompassing as I've heard it on other headphone amplifiers. But then again, the 90D did provide a better balanced output. Bass, I have to say, never shirked on the A90D. It was always there in buckets, but the extra focus pushed it a little further back into the mix. Then again, the 90D did provide a better tonal balance overall, allowing more information to come through. I then moved to vinyl and a Spanish language track from Edie Gourmet, E Los Panchos, which was her backing group on this record, and the track Vereda Tropical. This is a husky, dusky, sensual performance from Gourmet with acoustic guitar backing, and there's some conga drums in there, and other fiddly bits. It also has a slightly highlighted mid-range, so in the wrong hands can come over a little bright. Now, the 90D did acknowledge those rising mids, but it never made a big deal of this slightly clinical mid-range output because of its inherent tonally balanced nature. The focus here was the gourmet delivery, which was both clear and full of passion. The well-scrubbed, clean nature of the higher frequencies helped the treble and upper mids to provide a, an accurate rendition, especially around the conga drums. There was a physical slap of each drum hit, which was particularly effective. Finally, well, I did a silly thing. I tested this £599 headphone amplifier with a pair of headphones costing £4,100. Dan Clark Stealth headphones. Amazingly comfortable headphones, I must add. These headphones were connected via the fully balanced XLR sockets, and I returned to the Portis Head CD for the test. First up, well, the A90D drove the Stealth headphones with aplomb. Of course, the Dan Clarks had a big say when evaluating the final sound here, but I never felt that the A90D was harming their output in any way. The A90D never huffed or puffed or noticeably damaged the sound. There was no obvious bottleneck from the A90D. That is, even though I'm sure that a comparably priced headphone amplifier of, you know, £4,000 or so would walk all over the A90D in sonic terms, well, the A90D never provided any obvious indication of that, no real clue. The A90D never panicked. It never sounded confused. Via the A90D, bass was most impressive via the stealths. Firm, deep, massy, and focused enough to provide punch without swamping the midrange. As for those mids, well, there was a real sense of clarity here. 
so the detail reached the ear in an effortless manner. So how do I conclude this review of the topping A90D balanced headphone amplifier? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts, then we'll do some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. I was pleasantly surprised at the overall tonal balance of the sound output. Yes, this is a balanced unit. Doesn't mean it's going to be tonally balanced. I've heard some balanced components where the balanced technology hasn't been well implemented, but it's very nice here. The sense of frequency discipline was good. Everything was in its place. No part of the soundstage sounded wayward or offended the ear in any way. Instead, each tested piece of music bathed in sonic detail. The overall focus and precision from the bass provided a sense of pace to the music, while the upper frequencies were both informative and detailed. Add that lot to the wide-ranging feature set, and you have a quality headphone amplifier for any home hi-fi chain. So, let's look at a few pros and cons, shall we? And in the good column... Well, I've said it enough, but I'll say it again. I loved the tonal balance from especially the mid-range. In addition, I thought the focused bass was a real plus point and added a sense of control to the overall soundstage. Feature set, well, there's enough on here to please just about everyone, while the output selection front and back of the chassis is impressive. In the bad section, well, it's a minor personal points, but I do miss the early A90s toggle switches and especially the gain command, which is now on the remote. Not a big deal, as I say, but a little irritation on my part. Even so, that does nothing to lower the rating, and that rating is a good one. It's an award-winning groovy, folks. 8 out of 10. Congratulations to Topping. And that's me done. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And I would encourage you, please, if you can click the like and subscribe buttons, if you haven't already done so, it just helps this channel to keep on growing. Look down below in the description for those live chapter headings I mentioned early on. Plus, there are links to my website and my Facebook group, and you're welcome to join that if you'd like. Plus, if you can support me on Patreon, that keeps this YouTube channel going. There's all kinds of exclusive stuff over there, I might add, so check it out. But I would much appreciate any support you can possibly supply. I will be back on Monday with another review. What am I going to give you? Possibly some speakers. Floor standards, I would say. Anyway, check out Monday's review and I will reveal all. Until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.